Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I learned a lot about water during my time pastoring on the Texas Gulf Coast. At First Christian Church, Texas City, we were a mere five minute drive to the Texas City Dyke, which is a five mile long levee that's designed to keep the sediment uh, from the Gulf out of the bay where different ships would come in and out of. And it's, it's mostly a fishing pier with some sandy, beachy areas, but members of my congregation flocked there no matter what time of year it was for a little sun and sand and wind and water. Slightly further away were the nicer, more touristy beaches, further away from our oil refineries of Texas City, uh, but also they were generally more crowded. But no matter where they were, pool or bay or gulf side, they enjoyed the water, walking along the beach, swimming, fishing, boating. And with the numbers of people here in this church who seem to love to go to Florida, I would guess you maybe love water too, but that might also be because you want a little warmth and sunshine as well. Water is important and not just for recreation and rest and renewal. It is crucial to life. With food, without food, humans can survive for a few weeks, but without water, only a few days. In Survivor and the other survival TV shows, their contestants always make their first priority, finding a source of water and finding a way to make fire so that they can make that water drinkable and safe for consumption. Water is needed to nourish plants and crops so that they might grow into food for us and for other creatures. Water is all around us. So our story for today begins, in the beginning, God. Before we bring anything else into that sentence, verbs or actions, we know all that was and is that in the beginning was God and nothing else. It doesn't seem like that was complex, but then we add the verb into that. God created. The whole phrase doesn't seem complex at all. In fact, we often skip it over, see it as the opening to this larger story like once upon a time or in a galaxy far, far away. See, it sets up what is going to happen. It's not an important part of the story, or so we think. But it's actually in these words that form a foundation for one of the fundamental Christian doctrines agreed upon and voted and decided on by the second century church, creatio ex nihilio, creation from nothing. And we know now, just as those in the church knew then, that this doctrine is less about understanding how creation occurred and more about affirming that everything and everyone that exists in our world and our universe depends on the creative and sustaining power of God. For as long as humanity has stared into the cosmos and wondered about the hows and whys and whats of creation, we have also been fascinated by the mysteries in our own backyard, in the midst of our oceans and seas. Explorers and sailors from every civilization have pushed themselves into the water, sailing across vast oceans and down rivers to see what lies at the other side. Even today, just as we look up, some scientists also continue to look within, finding things just as complex as we see in the stars within our, the depths of our own seas. If you have ever seen the BBC show Blue Planet, it's a great Netflix binge for those of y'all who are looking for something educational 
So, you know, not, uh, not just mindless, but also fascinating. You might discover the creation and the life that our oceans and our seas teem with. In the first episode, the narrator says, our planet is a blue planet. Over 70% of our globe is covered by the sea. The Pacific Ocean alone covers half the globe. And you can fly across it nonstop for 12 hours and still see nothing more than a speck of land. See, in our story for today, the earth, before it could even be called earth, is a watery chaos, depths, not more than a speck of land. Before the marine life, before the beaches, the deep was present with God and God's breath blew across it. Rivers and streams have an immense amount of creating power. They have shaped and they have carved their way through our earth. The Grand Canyon, for instance, began with a stream carving its way through rock. Now we know as the mighty Colorado. And not too far away, the Grand Canyon is the Hoover Dam, man-made, but where water's power has been harnessed for our own human use for hydroelectric power. We know and recognize there is something amazing in the power of the water. Look along at the beaches when you go maybe early in the morning. Walk along the beach before the crowds emerge, before they're covered with children in sandcastles and picnic baskets and beach towels. You can see things that wash up. Shells that have been rubbed smooth by the currents, petrified wood, sea glass, objects literally transformed into something new and precious by the sea. As Pocahontas sings in the Disney movie, what I love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice. The water is always changing, always going. And about 2,500 years earlier, the Greek philosopher Herakl... I practice this in everything. <laughs> Herculetus said something similar, perhaps maybe inspired Disney and their own film. No man ever steps in the same river twice because it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Water leaves its mark on the earth and on us. As Christians, we perhaps know that more than others. As we step into the waters of the depths and are submerged and we come out refreshed and renewed through baptism, we don't see the mark of the water once the sun has dried it away and our skin no longer has that shiny baptism glisten but that mark stays long with us. That mark continues to work in and among us like the sea glass, like the petrified wood, continuing to create, continuing to go. As Brienne said, God's not done with us yet. God's continuing to work in and among us through the water, through the wind. This first chapter of Genesis was written during a time that the Israelites were in exile in Babylon after the fall of the temple in Jerusalem. And in the midst of the exile and the destruction and the chaos in a foreign land with captors who worshipped different gods, gods that were statues and idols so unlike their redemptive and liberating God, and captors who followed a different calendar, not the seven-day week which marked the days of creation that their God created. It's in that place while feeling helpless that perhaps they saw the different waters, a different sea, and they watched the wind blow among the tree and across those waters, and those signs reminded them of their own God who created all of this out of chaos. 
It served as a reminder that even in the midst of the chaos of the world that they lived in, their God, Yahweh, continued to create order out of the chaos and that the spirit of God continued to move over the waters of the deep and through their lives. This story of creation isn't just to bring hope to captives of long ago in a foreign land. This is also a story of creation for us today in the midst of the chaos of the world that we live in. The chaos of natural disasters like the earthquakes in Puerto Rico, like Hurricane Harvey, which Sam and I and my congregation went through in Texas City. The chaos that is human made of violence and conflict the chaos that is wrought by seeds of division and discord. The chaos that exists in our own personal struggles with family and friendships, work and finances, depression and anxiety. It is in the midst of all this chaos that we look to the sunrise and the sunset over the waters of the deep and we remember in a time of chaos it was God who created order. In a time of chaos, God created something beautiful and wonderful. In a time of chaos, from the water, God shaped and sculpted the earth, and from the wind, God breathed life and spirit into the world and would eventually breathe that same wind into you and me. <clears throat> If you've ever seen someone experiencing maybe a moment of anxiety, a panic attack, maybe you've also seen what perhaps can help the most in that situation, whether it's a service animal coming alongside and bringing a calming presence, or it's another person coming alongside and holding you. And they breathe, breathe in, Breathe out. And you see, it's that person who comes alongside you. It's their breath that brings down your racing heart that allows you to breathe again. It's that breath of God, that wind, that has gotten more powerful as our service has gone on. It's that wind of God that comes into the chaos of our lives and reminds us to breathe and reminds us that we are not alone. This story is a, our way of holding onto hope when all other signs of order in our lives are gone. And we continue to search for the signs of God's power and God's creative work. See, in the midst of the chaos, we not only find that God continues to create, but in the next chapter of Genesis, we are reminded that we were created by God in God's own image so that we might be co-creators with God. There's a reason it was good, it was good, and then it was very good. God needed someone, God needed a being to be in the world and to carry on God's creative work. In Texas City, as I mentioned, we were, uh, we were an oil refinery town. And members of my congregation would tell stories from the 70s and 80s about how it was not a town you really wanted to live in. When you reached, first of all, when you drove up to town, you would see it in the air, the murkiness, the brownness, not clear skies over the water like in this picture. And then you would start to smell it. And if you can see that and you can smell that, then you also kind of wonder what's going into the water around this place. That beautiful dike I mentioned where people like to swim and fish. Well, the people of the town and the leaders of that town said, we need to make this a place that people not only just come to work for their livelihood, but where their children can live and can live and breathe clean air and have clean water to drink, can live in the fullness of the life God created for them. And so together, 
They saw the ways in which human behavior had damaged their town. And they said, God imagines a different way. So they worked hard and they created together so that when Sam and I moved there, I would never have guessed that was the history of Texas City. And when I saw our children playing and our children at the school next door, I thought, this is a place where they can be the fullness of the people God has created them to be. See, even today, even in the chaos, the chaos that sometimes we create, God continues to take that chaos and turn it into creation. But as God's beloved community, we have a responsibility. We are now entrusted with the care of that creation too. Through the waters of our baptisms, we are filled with God's power, God's mighty and amazing creating power so that in the midst of whatever chaos might find its way into our lives, we might create something beautiful and wonderful just as God continues to do, just as God has taught us to do, and just as God has called us to do. Amen.